Hi, and welcome to High Vibe Astrology. My name's Jennifer, and today we're going to be talking about the Virgo new moon. This new moon will be taking place at 14 degrees, 38 minutes of Virgo. It's activating the ninth house in the United States chart, and we're going to be looking at that and also some other aspects that are important to the evolution of this country. So much is happening right now, and so much that is happening in this country impacts the rest of the world. And really, that's what the ninth house has a lot to do with. It's about broader horizons, international affairs, and other cultures. And so this is really, really important for us to understand at this time. And more than that, the ninth house is the house naturally ruled by Sagittarius and the planet Jupiter. This is important because the United States has Sagittarius rising. The ascendant is 12 degrees of Sagittarius and this new moon at 14 Virgo forms a square to the ascendant. So everything that this new moon is doing and especially what Jupiter is doing is highly significant to what is going on and what is unfolding in the United States at this time. My goal in doing these videos and in changing the name from Astro Sound Oracle to High Vibe Astrology is to get all of us on board with holding the highest vision, the highest vibrational outcome for all that is unfolding at this time. We are at a huge crossroads, a very intense time, and it is not the time to be complacent. It's not the time to give our power away to the people who have governed this world. It is time for us as individuals to take back our God-given divine right to freedom and our choice in how we connect to the divine and to the higher consciousness. So that is my intention. I hope you will stay tuned for the whole thing. And uh, the next part is going to be the astrology and discussing all these aspects. The last part is going to be playing the planetary tones and harmonic blends that represent these aspects so that we can all hold the space and the vision for the highest outcome for everyone. Thanks. So for this first aspect, what we're looking at is the new moon at 14 degrees of Virgo in the ninth house of the USA chart. This new moon forms a sextile to the sun, the USA sun at 13 degrees of Cancer, while it forms a square to the ascendant, the rising sign at 12 degrees of Sagittarius. The sextile to the sun is supportive of our identity as a nation, that identity being expressed through the sign of cancer, which is the embodiment of respecting our ancestral background, our ancestral roots, our um, desire to protect what is ours to protect our nation. The square, however, to the ascendant is tension around this new moon in this new cycle that is beginning in the ninth house and how that jives with how we dawn upon the world. The rising sign has everything to do with how our identity as a nation is revealed to the world or perceived by the world and also how we view the world through the lens of the ascendant. So this new moon is bringing about tension that is asking to be resolved. It's motivating us to change in this regard. And the fact that this new moon is taking place in the ninth house is a brand new cycle asking us to broaden our horizons to the big picture that is unfolding to have another look at our relationships with other countries. And because this new moon is in the sign of Virgo, this also does pertain to health, healthcare, and how we are addressing 
these needs within our nation. What we're looking at here is the opposition that is formed from this Virgo new moon at 14 degrees to the United States Sedna at 15 degrees of Pisces. Sedna is the embodiment of the hero heroine's journey of all three water signs. It represents Cancer's journey from leaving the family of origin and rather than following the tribal rituals, actually becoming the master of your own destiny, being your own boss. That's the journey basically from Cancer to Capricorn. For Scorpio, the journey is about being able to withstand all of the changes that Scorpios undergo surrendering to the change so that they can reach a place of harmony and peace and living in harmony with the earth, which is Taurus, and also trusting that resources will be provided. No matter how many times you experience loss, resources will be provided, but it's all about balancing these polarities. That's what Sedna represents, balancing the polarities as they are experienced within the context of the water signs. For Pisces, the journey is having to face where we have deceived ourselves or allowed others to deceive us, where we've given our power away by simply going with the flow, allowing, you know, being in the middle of that ocean and going with each wave instead of having a firm idea of who we are as an individual identity. So Pisces' journey is moving from the disorientation and confusion of Pisces to the wise discernment of Virgo, the opposite sign. And it's also about being able to pull in the highest spiritual vision, which is the high vibe of Pisces, into the material realm, into the physical world, which is Virgo. And this is exactly the dynamic that's playing out with this opposition from the Virgo new moon to Sedna in Pisces. So what we're looking at here is the United States moon at 27 degrees of Aquarius, still impacted by Jupiter, even though it's three degrees uh, away from the moon and retrograde, it is still close enough and it is affecting the USA's moon. It's also that much more important because Jupiter is the ruler of our chart, of our rising sign. So Jupiter has a lot to do with the evolution of the United States and our journey. The fact that Jupiter is retrograde in the sign of Aquarius and activating the moon, which represents the soul of our nation, and that we were indeed founded upon, or born with, if you will, the soul of a rebel, the soul of freedom-seeking, independent people who want to maintain that freedom. Jupiter, which rules ninth house activity and Sagittarian endeavors, does have a lot to do with international relationships, broadening our horizons, so this retrograde Jupiter is asking us to reevaluate just what our role in the world should be. We have to also look at how that relationship is asking to be changed so that we are not taking away our own freedom in the process of wanting to bring freedom to other people around the world. We cannot give to any other nation what we do not possess ourselves. And these are the issues that the astrology is asking us to take a look at. Now, the other really wonderful thing about this new moon chart is that Venus is at 25 degrees of Libra, forming a trine to our moon and to Jupiter at 24 Aquarius. There's another aspect that I'm going to get to in just a minute that involves Venus. But this trine is very supportive in asking us to harmonize the 
Venusian values of fairness and equality with our desire for freedom and how we go about achieving freedom for ourselves in this nation and for others. In this aspect, what we're looking at is a grand trine between the United States Mars at 21 Gemini to the new moons Venus at 25 Libra and Jupiter at 24 Aquarius. And this bodes well to have any grand trine involving Venus, Mars, and Jupiter is very beneficial. The fact that it is a grand air trine between these three planets bodes well for information coming forth that is unhindered. Information is air the mind, the intellect. The high vibe expression of a grand air trine seeks truth, represented by Aquarius, fairness and equality, represented by Libra, and personal choice, represented by Gemini. The low side of any trine is thinking that it'll all be done for us. Trines tend to make us complacent, you know, make us feel like there's nothing to do or to consider here. And in air, it could express as complacency toward or deliberately ignoring information that could actually benefit the collective. So these are the low and the high vibe potentials that could express for this grand air trine. And that again is why I introduced the sounds so that I can invite all of us to hold the highest vibrational outcome for these energies. That we're... So what we're looking at here is a dynamic between the planet Mars and the planet Neptune. Neptune, transiting Neptune is in Pisces, its own sign, so that does bring it more power. However, it's retrograde, so its power is not expressing as directly or making as direct of an impact upon us in the collective but we do have a double whammy of mars and neptune combining mars animates and brings energy to whatever it touches so transiting mars in virgo is energizing our physical health and our healthcare system the, the usa's natal mars at 21 degrees of Gemini forms a square transiting Mars at 24 Virgo. Squares don't have to be bad. We can benefit from the energy of squares. You just have to know how to resolve these energies. And the solution for Gemini and Virgo is using data and making choices, Gemini, that benefit health and the body, Virgo. Now, the way that Neptune impacts our decision-making and our choices, because Neptune is also forming a square, an exact square to Mars at 21 Gemini. This is the dialogue between our choices and Piscean low vibe deception and high vibe spiritual vision. So we have the choice to use this energy for the high vibrational expression or the low vibe. And naturally I'm encouraging us all to keep the high vibe of these energies in mind and to really tap into our spiritual God-given power to create our future together as we would like to see it unfolding. The story for our future, the story of our future has not been decided or written. It's incumbent upon us to realize that when we use the Piscean energy to understand our connectedness and use the highest spiritual vision for ourselves on the planet, we can in that moment access past, present and future and that gives us the power to rewrite what has been a deception in the past to, if the dream can become a nightmare, then the nightmare can also turn into the dream. And this is how we can best use this new moon Virgo discernment, especially with Mars energizing it up here, to really bring about the future we deserve.
and that we all want. The next few aspects I want to point out to you have only to do with the Virgo New Moon chart. In this aspect, what we're looking at is a very close quincunx between Mars at 24 degrees of Virgo and Jupiter at 24 degrees of Aquarius. Again, this is about resolving what shows up as tension first. Quincunxes are that pebble in the shoe, uncomfortable, awkward feeling. But there is a common ground that we can find between Aquarius and Virgo. If we keep in mind that the high vibe of Aquarius is about freedom and independence, and the low vibe of Aquarius is technological and scientific advancement at the expense of human emotion, at the expense of what actually makes us feel human, which is emotional bonding and connection. Virgo is about making things more efficient. It's about improving systems and organizations or the body systems so that the body is operating more efficiently. So this is where I find the common denominator and the common ground between Aquarius, which wants to free humanity and improve humanity's conditions, and Virgo, which wants to improve systems, efficiency, and the health of the body. So really, Aquarius and Virgo together represent our healthcare system, but it's new technology that does not seek to override the natural ability in the body to heal itself. We have to support the immune system. So here what we're looking at is an extremely close trine from the Virgo new moon at 14 degrees 38 seconds with Uranus at 14 degrees 39 seconds of Taurus. This is highly significant because Uranus is ruling the Jupiter in Aquarius, it rules the United States moon in Aquarius, and it also governs this changing age as we move from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. Uranus wants to revolutionize the way things have been done for decades, centuries, thousands of years, things that have not been working in the best interests of humanity and all life on this planet. So Uranus wants to liberate us from the way things have been. It wants to revolutionize technology in a way that benefits all humanity. And as this expresses itself in the Earth signs of Taurus and Virgo, once again, this whole new moon in Virgo is about health, health care, and the systems of the body and how they work together to create efficiency. This Uranus revolutionizing of technology is in an earth sign Taurus, which wants to honor nature, the environment, the ecosystem um, that is our home, this planet Earth. So together, Virgo and Taurus are in harmony. And this new moon, this new cycle in Virgo is working with Uranus, the revolutionary liberator to help us find solutions, creative solutions that will advance humanity and advance technology without sacrificing the natural immune system and the, the earth body's natural ecosystem. There are, as there always are, so many more aspects that I could be discussing but I'm gonna end with this one. It's the square between Pluto and Capricorn and Venus and Libra. Pluto is retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn. And like I said before, the squares do not have to be detrimental. It all depends on how we use the energy. But squares are meant to wake us up. The tension is meant to motivate us to resolve these two energies. Venus in Libra is strong because Venus is the natural ruler of Libra. So it is naturally drawing to itself fairness and equality. That's the high vibe. 
The low vibe of Libra, however, will express itself in this constant ping pong, looking at the data and not making a decision, wanting everybody to get along and or both sides to get along and just wanting to keep things copacetic. Let's just keep the harmony. I don't want to look any deeper into this issue because I may see something that is very unpleasant. It is kind of skimming across the top of things. This is the low vibration of Libra. Just skimming across the surface and as long as things look good, I'm not going to disturb it. Pluto is an entirely different energy. Pluto's all about teaching us right use of power. Unfortunately, it teaches us by showing us the opposite first. It dredges up those areas where power has been abused. So Pluto is revealing to us where those entities who have maintained the reins of power have been abusing it and their abuses have remained hidden. But because Pluto is returning by next February of 2022, Pluto does return to its natal position in the USA chart. Therefore, it will absolutely, irrevocably be dredging up all of those areas where there have been egregious power abuses and crimes against humanity. Right now, through this square, we are experiencing the tension of the, the first inklings of what these power abuses have been and what they've entailed. And it's up to us to find resolution within ourselves. The best way that we can help find resolution in the collective is by looking at those places within our own life where we have not addressed the trauma, have not addressed power abuses that either we have perpetrated against others in manipulating others for our own agenda or where others have abused us by forcing an agenda on us that we did not choose. So these are all the issues that are being highlighted at this Virgo new moon. I hope that you will stay tuned for the harmonic blends that I've prepared that are symbolic of these energies and and as you listen, I invite you to hold the highest vibrational outcome for your life, for the United States, and for the entire world, because the world needs your high vibe right now. So I do appreciate you tuning in. Be well, be in harmony. So this is Sun, Moon, and I'm using Chiron to represent Virgo for this Virgo new moon. This is going to be Sun, New Moon, and Jupiter for the square to the United States Ascendant. This is Sun, New Moon, and Sedna for the opposition. This is Sun, New Moon, and Uranus for the trying to Uranus.
This is Mars with Neptune. This is Mars, Venus, and Jupiter played together to represent that grand air trine. This last one is Pluto with Venus. So that concludes this video on the Virgo new moon for September 6th. If you do enjoy these videos, it would help immensely if you could like, share, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell. And I will see you next time on High Vibe Astrology. This is Jennifer. Thanks again.